Like, what happened with Heart 8 that changed your life? I, I just, it was a, you know, that w- I was way too young to be given the keys to the car, I think. How old were you? 23. And what was the movie called originally? Sydney. And you wrote it because of why? I wrote it because I had to, because it just came out. Why that character? Good question. I loved this actor named Philip Baker Hall. Still love him. Yeah. And, um, you use him a lot. Yeah. You used him a few times. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and, and honestly, I can remember just starting to write one day, a Jan- January torrential downpour. I was living with my dad up in Coldwater Canyon, and I just started writing, and that's what came out. And then uh, went to make the movie. But it I wasn't had... based on anything? Not really. Yeah, it was based on stuff. I'd been working in Reno. I was, I'd been up, I'd, I'd spent some time up in Reno. Yeah. Um, and I was coming off experiences there of watching old guys that seemed to live. Where'd in these you see casinos. Baker Hall? Secret Honor, uh-huh. Midnight Run, uh, the long list of great character parts where he would come on and be the best, coolest looking thing. In the Secret movie. Honor is that the Altman? That's the Altman movie, the Nixon movie. Yeah, who did he even play Nixon? He played Nixon. It's just him in a room. That was him. Yeah. Why didn't I know that? That was astounding. It's great, and it's like not one that everyone knows. Mm-mm. But he was always around and. The, he, he would be this. He looked like somebody who just stepped out of the 1940s, like one of those great character actors you see in those movies. So you here, saw him as the character, absolutely. And yeah. I heard his voice as the character. And I was writing, um, and I kept thinking of, you know, another actor who had just started out that I'd been seeing a lot, John C. Riley, right? Who had been in like maybe five or ten films at that point. But I just thought, my God, this guy's so good. Yeah. So I went and I made that movie and. And got through it somehow. You know, I just bluffed my way th- through directing. Well, you got to deal with who? There's a company called Reicher Entertainment. Who... And you pit, you you showed up with the script, or yeah, but you got to understand that at that time, probably based on the success of Pulp Fiction and a couple other small independent films, there was a lot of cash floating around from these cable companies. Yeah. So if you could make a movie for under two million bucks, they could kind of sell it off piece by piece with just enough kind of genre elements and a, and a couple cast names, and you could just go make your movie. Right. And I was bluffing my way through it, and I kind of like, I should have had a 90-minute movie, and I cut together this like two-and-a-half-hour thing, and I thought, you know, I had to like <laughs> plant a firm stake, like I'm not changing a frame of it. And they're yeah. like, I don't know about that. And really, was I only, I'd only been working on it for three or four weeks, and I just I hadn't had time. To, to cut it properly? To cut it properly. And I was just bluffing, man. I mean, I was just completely making it up as I was going along. And So what studio were you dealing with? There was no studio. It was just this company, this little c- cable company that had some cash, and they were going to sell it to a distributor here. So I what think. happened with it, ultimately? Ultimately, it came out in about four or five theaters. And But how did the cut happen? Why is it not called what you wanted it to be called? It was a long, sad history of going through a rigmarole with this company, and eventually I, I, I won on the cut of the movie. Well, what had happened was, actually, they said... You can do what, at a certain point, it was just a war of attrition that they realized that this, this, this skinny, annoying kid is not going to leave us alone. Because that really was just sitting outside their houses going, I want my movie. They weren't going to release it? They, they weren't were... going to, they were going to release it. They were going to release another cut of it. And they finally said, they put it into my lap and they said, look, if you can put together your version of the movie, uh, you can have it. And that, that was, that was a lot of dough that it was going to take to do that, but I just signed on to make Boogie Nights. So I took all that money and I said, okay, and I paid for it and I did it. And, and then What do you mean? So you, but you, so- I had to finish the film. I had to really finish. We went through the process of making the movie. Right. We edited the movie. They saw it. They said, we don't like this. I said, I like it. I mean, I had whittled it yeah, down to 90 right, minutes. Right. And I said, we don't like it. We've got bigger and better ideas. And they changed the music. They changed the title. They changed, uh, they changed pretty much all that you could change. Yeah, and I said I just can't I can't live with myself. I think I'm going to jump off a bridge. And they said uh, too bad. <laughs> and then we got lucky that it was a version of the film that I made and that was sent to the Cannes Film Festival, and they invited it over. So a couple of th- started, good things started coming our way. And eventually, actually through their their goodwill, they did say, fine, you know, if you want to do this, you can do it, but we're not paying for it. So if you can come up with the cash to reconstruct your version, you can do it. So that's where I took the money from Boogie Nights. I paid to finish this film. And why why did you change your name? I didn't. That was that was that one moment where they said, "We'll give you everything," but and I just said, uh, "Okay, if I win everything else, you get the name, and it's fine with me." So it wasn't that huge of a mind fuck. 
it was emotionally a, a huge mind and um, emotional and 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 it was a fuck in every way it was just like baptism by fire getting into hollywood it was crazy to go through that and i didn't know how to deal with it i was too young i didn't know how to deal well, what was the the main thing you learned out of that experience mm. was it a control thing yeah i suppose um I think I went into my next situation thinking that the lesson I learned was to be paranoid, be protective, <laughs> and don't trust anyone. And fortunately, I got to work with a great studio and a guy named Mike DeLuca who was able to see what I had gone through. And he said, no, no, trust me and, and, and put your faith in me and you can work with me. And he was your producer? Yeah. On Boogie Nights? Yeah. And he sort of paid for the film and made the film. And that really- What studio? New Line. Uh-huh. Which made a you know, bunch of great films back in the 90s. 